the Los Angeles Lakers have completely solved the Houston Rockets. Head coach Frank Vogel devised a defensive game plan that has not only slowed Houston's pace to a crawl, but has also limited their three-point attempts to some of the lowest numbers in the D'Antoni era. So let's look at the Harden rules and why the small ball experiment as constituted by Daryl Morey and the Rockets this season will most likely come to an end as LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Alex Caruso drop the hammer. We all know that the Lakers are doubling Harden almost every chance they get in the half court. But one of the rules Vogel instituted is not to double if Anthony Davis is guarding Harden. They're totally okay with AD's length and mobility on him and will not get bent out of shape defensively if either AD or LeBron guard Harden one-on-one. The Rockets have virtually stopped hunting Davis in the pick and roll, realizing that they won't draw a double team out of it. That said, I think Kuzma forgot the rule and dashed over there late, but watch how they will not help off the corners so they can close out and force guys like P.J. Tucker to take the absolute last kind of shot they want. And while this hasn't worked out that well for the defense, this all makes sense once you realize that Davis normally guards Russell Westbrook, which allows him to roam on the weak side when they do actually double with other players guarding Harden. With AD occupied on the ball, the Lakers are unwilling to start scrambling without him back there to rotate and help. So that brings us to the next facet of the Lakers' defensive game plan, Davis guarding Westbrook. Now, this is nothing new. They did this in the regular season, so it's a bit head-scratching that Mike D'Antoni wouldn't have been better prepared for it. In Game 2, it enables him to ignore the bad shooting Russ in the corner to erase this shot at the hoop. Here's a good example of Davis on Russ in the weak side corner when they double Harden. Watch how it allows AD to protect the rim more easily, and now they've got Covington being an on-the-dribble creator, who immediately gives it up at the sight of Davis. Watch then how Danny Green leads Russ to double, it invites the shot they want, and it's an air ball. Out of the pick and roll, the Lakers are going to double Harden every single gosh darn time, but the adjustment the Rockets make is putting Russ at the wing, meaning it's Danny Green who's going to rotate to the short roll. That forces AD to make a long closeout, and he won't get there in time. When Harden gets doubled out of the pick and roll, he's got a choice to either relieve the pressure by making a perimeter pass or hit the short roller. The problem with making the pass in the perimeter is that in this case, they lose their advantage as the defense doesn't have to move to match up man-to-man. This leads to Russ wandering around the court with LeBron guarding him until he ultimately burps up an air ball fadeaway from the baseline. If Harden reads it fast enough, he can make the pass the second the double team comes, and by cutting Rocco to the left side, it doesn't leave any other help to get out to the corner for the easy shot. But more often than not, the perimeter pass out of the double team is just inviting certain Rockets to do things they're not comfortable with. Covington drops the dribble for a second on the way to the hoop, Tucker is dribbling and skip passing, and all of that allows Davis to rest on defense on the weak side, especially if Russ won't make the extra pass. Davis lures him into bricking this shot up, and the Lakers get another stop. Let's look at what happens when Harden draws a double team and hits the short roller, as this is the best opportunity the Rockets have to gain a numbers advantage. But it means guys doing things they're not good at, like Rivers trying to create in space. AD can easily help off of Russ, making Rivers cross over into an easy steal. It's Jeff Green's turn, and he's definitely not the guy you want to short roll to. Harden struggled a bit against the double team to even get the pass to the short roller, trying to hit Tucker as the target here, and then dealing with heavy pressure from LeBron as he tries to hit Russ drifting to the elbow here. They try their hand at Tucker again, who can handle maybe one dribble and then a kick out, but the spacing is bad with Rivers in the logo, enabling LeBron to get to the wing, Rondo to the corner, and Gordon stepping out of bounds. It's Jeff Green's turn again, and while it looks really awkward, he does find the open man on the wing. Russ correctly bypasses the shot, but could have wounded someone in the stands, firing the ball like this out of bounds like a cannon shot. The Rockets tried their hand at passing to the wing first, 
then hitting the roll man, but there's still no advantage here as the Lakers zone easily matches up and Caruso can pressure Covington into a miss of a shot he's clearly not used to taking. If you're enjoying this kind of detailed explanation and analysis, then you'll love Masterclass, an incredible library filled with videos of the absolute highest production value with some of the foremost experts in their fields. Even their YouTube ads are mesmerizing. I never skip them. And I've already devoured Steph Curry's shooting masterclass and can't wait to dive into other subjects like Ron Howard's directing class and Neil deGrasse Tyson's scientific thinking course. I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every masterclass. And since you're part of the B-Ball Breakdown conversation, you get 15% off the annual all-access pass. Go to masterclass.com slash bball. That's masterclass.com slash bball for 15% off Masterclass. All of these clips are showing you what an out-coaching job looks like, since D'Antoni hasn't been able to adjust and find something that works better the last three games. Waiting for the double teams has caused the Rockets to take more and more time with the ball, reducing the number of possessions and lowering the amount of three-point shots they can get off in a game. The short roll fiasco after the Harden double is crazy, considering they haven't tried to lure the double off of Eric Gordon's man and let him be the man to make quick decisions in an advantage situation. If I had to see one more Jeff Green short roll, I'm going to go crazy. And they barely even tried getting Russ in the situation for heaven's sake. One reason they probably avoided this is because it would bring Anthony Davis to the ball to double. And we've already seen Harden struggle to get that pass off. AD is long and agile and would make it even harder to get the pass out of there. Now, you might remember back in September, I did a video on Harden advocating for him to post up more. So maybe it's the wrong guys are posting up. Well, I think about it. Right? If James Harden was posting up, he would definitely have a, a, a high All the That's a, a fascinating uh, concept. And uh, just the idea that maybe the guys were, it's the wrong guys posting up. And that's why the points are so low and inefficient. And it's coaching criminality that they haven't combated the constant perimeter double teaming with more post ups down low. At least here, he has already basically penetrated the defense and can be a scoring threat as well as setting up his teammates for easy shots they're used to knocking down. Heck, they even had Russ post up, and that went well for them. They could also benefit from getting Harden to stop standing around so much on offense. Once he gives it up off a double team, it's basically four on five unless the ball gets back to him with little time on the shot clock. If he could release the pressure, then run off a weak side screen, I think it would unlock a ton of easy shots for him. Unfortunately, I don't anticipate a lot of radical changes to the offense in game five, and it most likely spells doom for this Rockets team, as changes will undoubtedly be made to the roster and maybe even the whole small ball concept. But give lots of credit to the Lakers and their coaching staff, for this game plan has been working to perfection. And it must be nice to know that they're not going to have to adjust. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe for more playoff breakdowns coming up. We'll have at least one a day during the postseason, so turn on those notifications so you can be alerted right away. You in?